around. All right, thank you all very much for joining us today. We do appreciate it. It was a controversial story, and we'll continue to follow it. Doctor, thank, thank you. you. Next up this morning, here is a shocking stat for you, and you got to pay attention to this. Experts say 10%, 10 of us shoplift on a regular basis. All right, one out of ten of you, that first row. <laughs> Who is it? Maybe it's one of us. <laughs> and during the holiday season, get this. These people are in New York City to do their holiday shopping, a lot of them. During the holidays, the number skyrockets. And just who is doing all this stealing? Well, it may surprise you. It's the busiest time of the year for shoppers and stores and thieves. Just as the holidays attract more people who honestly pay for their gifts and goodies, it also brings out a criminal clientele who would rather steal the stuff. It's hard to recognize a shoplifter. They could be anybody. You can turn around and bump into one anywhere. There are 27 million shoplifters, one in every 11 people. Men and women shoplift about equally as often and the majority of them started in their teens. More than $40 million worth of goods are stolen each year. That amounts to about $100 million going out the door every day. And during this insane season of crowded aisles and super sales, retail studies indicate it is also a prime time for shoplifting. A whopping one third of all merchandise ripped off is swiped between Thanksgiving and New Year's. Perhaps Oscar-nominated actress Winona Ryder was holiday gift shopping on December 12, 2001, when she was arrested for shoplifting at Saks Fifth Avenue in Beverly Hills. Ryder stole $5,560 worth of designer goods from the swanky store, making her the cover girl for celebrity bad behavior at the time. She was convicted of grand theft and vandalism and served 480 hours of community service. She, like millions of lesser-known shoplifters, never needed the things she stole. Well, joining us today is Michigan grandmother Sandra Jetkowski. She is a compulsive shoplifter, and she's been doing it since she was 12 years old. And right next to Sandra there is her husband, Thomas. And down there on the end, author of Something for Nothing and founder of the Shulman Center and a former shoplifter himself. He admits it readily. Uh, he is a therapist, though, now, Terrence Shulman. Terrence, thank you for being here. Might as well start with you, then. Uh, so, I mean, anybody does this. There are a lot of people who do this. It makes no difference what you're, what you're doing in life. You're in law school, and you're stealing stuff. What age were you? Well, um, I'm 42 now, but I shoplifted from about 15 to 25 and finally hit a bottom in 1990, so I've been in recovery for about 18 years. And there is no typical profile of a shoplifter. I'm not here to say the behavior is right. It is certainly wrong. There needs to be consequences. But we would be surprised by how many people shoplift and who is doing this and what kind of help they really need to okay, stop. Okay, well then clear that up. How many people shoplift, who is doing this, and how yeah. do they stop? Okay, well, I don't create the statistics, but there is a familiar statistic that one out of 11 or roughly 9% of the American population okay. shoplifts. So that's about 25 million people. And the bulk of that 25 million are people like you and me and the people in the audience, otherwise good, caring, law-abiding people, who aren't shoplifting out of economic need or greed no. or inherent dishonesty. They're not selling the items. They're not doing it to support a drug habit or a gambling habit. It's not they're about not, the money. They're not perfect. No. Most people shoplift things that they can well afford, and they're acting Why? Out, well, not as an excuse, but a lot of people have had experiences in their lives where they felt they have been stolen from, materially or symbolically. There's pain, grief, anger, unresolved feelings of entitlement or life having been unfair. They begin to act out, and then for a lot of people, they cross over line, it becomes a habitual pattern. They get a rush, they get a high, and they don't know how to stop or where to even go for help. It's a rush. Stop. For a lot of people, it is. And women or men? You'd be surprised. The uh, stats show that about half of the shoplifters are men. Well, There's I mean, the other half are women. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so it's half and half. Half and half, exactly. Sandra? Yes. When we look at you, you're a grandmother. Come on, you were shoplifting since what age? Uh, Twelve. Yeah, was it an addiction then for you? Uh, no, no, it didn't become an addiction until um, later in my 20s. Why did, say. why did you start? Do you know? Um, just childhood trauma and... Um, a trauma? What do you mean? Mm, uh, a sexual. Uh, oh, it was from trauma when you were young. Yeah, about twelve. 
was not a family no. member. Yeah. Okay, no. so that they, that's a one-time thing, and you know. <laughs> so being upset very, about that led you to very do what? traumatic. You know, I think a lot of to kids to start stealing money from like my mom's purse, uh, and uh, and from her friends' purses, uh, and then it just kind of went on went on to to, to other things. Yeah, later in my, um, you know, uh, like I, I, I started uh, um, stealing. It's okay, I know you're nervous. Yeah, it's okay. I, I started stealing money from, uh, uh, when you're like, at work? Uh, at work. Oh, you did? Yes. Yeah. Tom, well, you, you got married, and on your honeymoon, <laughs> it, it began. Well, <laughs> let's put it this way. We went, uh, we went shopping uh, for groceries because we were staying at a cottage. We came out. She shows me this little bullion cube bottle. And if you ever saw them, you know, they're only about half full right. because sure. they only put so many in there. Well, she had the thing full. And she says, she says, well, she said to me, you know, she said, look, at, I've got a good deal, you know. I says, well, how did you get that? She says, I just took it from the other jar and put it in there. I says, you know, that's stealing. Yeah. You can't do that. But, but I didn't go back and return it. I just, you know, a sure. flag went up. And, and I, I didn't think anything of it at the time. But she then she gets arrested. Yeah, but this so is years deal. later. I know. But when you see your wife in shackles in a courtroom. Right. Uh, not a good this, feeling. You no, know, this ain't no joke anymore. No. And she called you, she called you the night before when, when she got arrested. She said, honey, I'm not going to be home. Tonight, click. Oops. Well, <laughs> long before that, I already knew. You know, we were married about six years before I ever found out anything. Yeah. When one of her friends, who happened to be a security officer at the J.C. Penney's, yeah. calls me and wanted to talk oh, to me. She says, "Do you know that your wife stole some items?" So again, and I said, "No." You can't look at someone and tell if they're a shoplifter or not. When we come back, shoplifters caught on tape and the high-tech weapons stores are now using to catch them. Yeah, we'll there's one thing in that. particular that's really interesting. Sorry, yeah. Let me tell you. Still to come, how to save money by throwing your budget out the window. The Morning Show, brought to you by BAM, and you're done. Remember the coin test? Well, now you can clean your whole house with Easy Off BAM. Cleaning used to mean all of these, but now I need just three. The power of orange BAM makes soap scum and lime scale just wipe away. Green BAM eliminates stubborn grease stains without scrubbing. And BAM bleach powers through tough toilet stains, mildew stained tiles, and blocked drains. For me, BAM is all I need. BAM! And the dirt is gone. Ow! So you think Santa will like these red and green M&Ms? I don't know. I never met the guy. <laughs> he does exist! They do exist. Oh. Uh, Santa? Theraflu Warming Relief. The power of Theraflu in a unique warming syrup to soothe and comfort. Theraflu, good to be back. For additional soothing comfort, try new vapor patch from the makers of Theraflu. So, Miss Coat Authority, what's hot? Rich wool, that's hot. Sporty ski jackets, that's hot. Saving money, that's hot. Save big on top brand coats for everyone. Burlington Coat Factory, the Coat Authority. Coming up Monday on The Morning Show, who is Zoe Zane? Inside the double life of the missing college porn star. And what's better for you, a salad or a steak? The answer will surprise you. Plus, dancer, singer, and actress, Christina Milian is here. Hey. Oh, boy. That'll be good. Gotta watch Mikey that day. Uh -huh. We are talking about the holiday epidemic of shoplifting. Yeah, during the holidays, they're out of control. A reformed shoplifter, Sandra Jakowski, is here, and her husband, Tom, is still with us. Also, shoplifting expert and therapist, he was once one, Terrence Shulman is joining us, and from the National Retailers Federation, Dan Butler. Dan, good to have you here. Good to be here. Dan, you know just what Terrence was saying. I mean, this is a huge problem. It's a huge, ep it's, a, it's an epidemic, I think you, some people might say, but also, it really costs us a lot of money. 
costs retailers $33 billion a year in loss. $33 billion. And all of us as consumers pay for that in the price of our goods. So it's in our best interest and your best interest that we fight this problem and that we work to solve, find solutions and to use technology to, to really fight loss in the stores. Well, let's use some technology here. On camera, you'll see some shoplifters. They use all sorts of tricks, including wheelchairs. Wheelchairs. Describe oh. what we're looking at here. Okay. We have some videos here we'll take a look at. In this first uh, set of videos, you're going to see a shoplifter in a wheelchair. They're going to be rolling up merchandise. And in the second shot here, you'll see they're going to conceal the merchandise by sitting on the merchandise. And that's usually an indication that they're not headed for the register with it. So we think. Uh, <laughs> when they roll it up and sit on it, yeah. That's right. It's a good but, indication. But you know, a lot of times people are going to maybe sometimes not pay close attention to that customer in the yeah. wheelchair because they think they need some time alone. Sure. Or they're looking and they don't want to crowd them. And here we have a case where somebody's using that as a ploy to steal. The other people work in teams. Like, what do you call this, the grab and run? Well, we have people who work in a grab and run scenario where one person's doing lookout and the other person's getting the merchandise ready to go. In this particular case, we have oh a group of five goodness. shoplifters. If wow. you watch carefully, they're stealing 22 handbags in less bags. than 15 seconds. It's $22,000 worth of loss to the store right there. Sandra, you were never doing that, were you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But remember this case out of Philadelphia, Juliet? We, a couple weeks ago, we talked about this. A grandmother was using her grandkids. I think this footage is using kids again, but this is a guy. Yeah, this is really a shame. This is a grandfather shopping with his two grandchildren. Oh, and if you look, he's sending them around the counter and behind the fixtures to steal the merchandise and bring it to them. And the shame of this is when they're apprehended, the parent or the grandparent in this case yeah. is sent to jail and the kids are sent to protective services. What? And uh, it's a tragic moment. Mm -hmm. what's, Terrence, what's the difference between shoplifting and kleptomania? Well, not to get too technical, but kleptomania is a very rare medical condition affecting maybe one half of one percent of the population, where shoplifting affects almost 10 percent of the population. Mm -hmm. So you've got a lot of different categories. Kleptomaniacs typically don't plan their stealing. They uh, tend to take things that they don't even want or use or need. They like throw the impulse, them. Impulse, grab. Very impulsive versus a little more premeditated. Most of the people I work with are compulsive. There's a pattern. They know to some degree that they're going to the stores with the intent to take something to get their high, to get their fix, to act out painful emotions. Sandra, is that how you felt when you were doing it? Did you get a high? Did you get a rush? A, a rush? Uh, euphoric rush? But then uh, depression would follow. You'd go into the car with your, some of your stuff. Right, right. And then uh, get very anxious uh, mm -hmm. as to. When is, when is the high? <laughs> as you're just leaving the store? Uh, leaving the cash register. Oh, you know, if you get by the, the cash register. Yes, yes. Then, then I'd have the euphoric high. Do you still have the urge to do it now? Not really an urge. Um, sometimes I have a fleeting thought and I just. Tell myself, like, why are you even thinking this? Yeah. You know, it, it, I mean, for my recovery, it's it's just it's hard. impossible. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to understand. But congratulations on seven years of recovery. And if you'd like some more information on shoplifting, you can go to our website, mjshow.com. Also, we're going to be talking um, with Dan in the uh, green room about some of the ways the retailers are fighting back. There's one in particular that I think is so interesting, and it probably is really going to have a major you know, effect on shoplifting. And we have some more footage from our camera, surveillance cameras. <laughs> Amazing stuff. Thank you all very much. Thank you, guys. Coming up, sexy foods. Going to the holiday Christmas party. Be careful of what you're Bring eating. Bring your asparagus. You may get turned on, Juliet. <laughs> Still ahead. Which is a better sex enhancer, wine and chocolate or asparagus? But up next, how can making a budget leave you broke? Inside the financial plan that bans the B word.